The following video is best watched in 60 frames per second and is meant only for Dragon Ball fans. Hey guys, it's your boy Arj back again with more Dragon Ball Super High Level Analysis and today we are once again revisiting this new series on the channel exploring Dragon Ball Super 2019 when it eventually returns sometime next year at around Easter. Last video was extremely popular and explored some of the immediate new arcs that will for sure be explored aka the Broly arc for starters and for all of you in this community with your notification bell hit you'd have been partaking also in my polls where I asked you guys what the next arc I would delve into should be and the vote is pretty clear I'd say a new Vegeta arc and all to do with Vegeta's promise to Kaba to visit Universe's 6th planet Sadala, aka what would have been planet Vegeta in Universe 7. As always I want you guys to leave your own ideas and opinions on this down below especially ideas for future arcs as I read and reply to almost all of them. Anything exceptional will even be brought to life on one of these videos and definitely placed in the poll so keep it up. Now we all know how this promise began, it initially all started moments after Vegeta beat down Kaba with one hit in blue form and Vegeta then lectured Kaba on the importance of Saiyan pride and how Kaba was lacking in it. It was at this point Kaba then told Vegeta that his king was prideful too and reminded him greatly of Vegeta which was intriguing to Vegeta and he replied that one day he would like to go there and really that's not just something you hear from Vegeta every day. Him expressing interest in anything but training? From this we knew he really meant it. Later in the Turtle of Power, after Vegeta momentarily saved Kaba from Frieza who was absolutely bodying Kaba, he again promised him not only that he would win the tournament in typical Vegeta fashion, but he would also wish back Universe 6 and that he would do that so that he could follow through on the promise once again making it clear his intentions to visit Sadala. Now cut to after episode 131 and we have just seen the Broly saga play out where the Broly is still alive after it is still to be said but in this saga this is where Vegeta for the first time in literal decades has once again met new Saiyans. Saiyans who for one of them Paragus was actually the right hand man of Vegeta's own father, King Vegeta, and the other being Broly, a Saiyan who was said to be born on the exact same day as Vegeta. Of course both of these details released in the recently leaked synopsis for the movie. I've got a video out on that already so go look through my videos to find that if you don't know what I'm talking about. Now no one knows yet what exactly what kind of conversation Vegeta will have with either Broly or Paragus but what we do know is that it's allegedly supposed to be an emotional exchange between Vegeta and Broly and given how much of the movie will explore flashbacks to planet Vegeta and the childhood of both Broly and Vegeta as well as the story of their fathers this entire movie arc may very well re-unlock the true Saiyan heritage and memories of his people he seemingly has pushed back during the Dragon Ball Z and Super series to the depths of his mind. This combined with the experience of meeting Kaba, Kale and Cauliflower as well back in the Turtle of Power without doubt would have brought back a resurgence of Saiyan pride and almost nationality. With Earth now at peace after Broly, Vegeta could very well ask Whis to take him to Universe 6 for the sole purpose of meeting Kaba once more, seeing how he's progressed and of course meeting the King something he no longer could do in his own universe. Of course inter-universe travel is completely allowed as we saw in the case of Goku vs Hit part 2 and Whis would gladly agree as long as Vegeta gives the usual promise slash bribe of amazing food. When Vegeta does eventually arrive on planet Vegeta he may encounter a number of low level Saiyans who don't recognise him and his strange looking armour that's influenced by the Frieza era which of course Kaba and the Saiyans of Sadala had never gone through and they may see him and Whis as an intruder. Whis may then be attacked but obviously with him dodging with ease with his natural ultra instinct and Vegeta with a smirk would most likely 
let these poor fools hit him head on just to show them how futile their efforts are before transforming into a Super Saiyan, blowing them all away as they watch stunned, looking on at the fabled Super Saiyan of legend before one of them mutters, it cannot be, he's a Super Saiyan, like Kaba. The word of this Saiyan would catch Vegeta's ear as he then questions him where Kaba is, and then to take him there. Eventually Vegeta would arrive and see Kaba once more, a little taller and older than before after the Turn of Power but not by much, and the two would talk about the events of the Turn of Power, how Universe 7 eventually won, Goku's unlocking of Ultra Instinct and Vegeta's form even beyond Blue. Kaba being interested in only his master Vegeta would ask for a rematch now that Kaba has mastered the Super Saiyan 2 form and of course hoping for a chance to see this new evolution blue form of Vegeta. With a smug look on his face, Saiyan Pride forces Vegeta to agree and within seconds the fight is over, showing once more the overwhelming difference of power between Kaba and Prince Vegeta. From this moment Vegeta would then re-mention the promise and request to see the man who rules as king of the Saiyans and who apparently reminds Kaba of Vegeta. When Vegeta meets the king, he will no doubt draw comparisons to his own father. Someone who we now know is not once the great and powerful brave man he was portrayed as in Dragon Ball Z. The new King Vegeta seen in the movie is skinny and a weak looking man. He will allow Frieza to call his people monkeys before him as he proclaims all Saiyans will bow down to Frieza with no sign of any mutiny building. This may in fact be a huge reason as to why Vegeta was so easily able to forget about the Saiyans, shutting them away to the back of his mind and never once thinking to resurrect them in either Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Super. Seeing the new Saiyan King of Sadala however and how he is a true king with pride like his own may very well reignite his wish to be one with the Saiyans again, even if it isn't his own from Universe 7. He may even teach this king how to transform, taking him under his wing, believing it to be unjust, the king of the Saiyans to not be the most powerful Saiyan, aiming for him not to just turn out like his father. At the end of his training, the new king may be able to go to Super Saiyan 2 or even beyond, far surpassing even Kaba and thus leaving Vegeta happy, that at least in this universe he was able to change things for the king and help the Saiyans achieve the power they always had within them. Now I'm sure at some point in this arc a new villain will appear just for the sake of every saga so far having one and it could go one of two ways, either the being is truly so powerful that Vegeta is the one who is needed in blue form to stop him with the minimal aid of Kaba and the King in their Super Saiyan 2 forms and thus doing a huge amount of fan service for all the Vegeta fans out there by giving Vegeta his first arc where he's truly the one taking all the glory as the hero or they go for a deeper more meaningful story where Vegeta realises this is not his universe and if he stops this foe it will just mean the next one who arrives will leave them for dead anyway given these foes tend to get more powerful as time goes on and with this information leaves it to the king, Kaba and the rest of the Saiyans he has now left the knowledge and power of the Super Saiyan with to deal with this foe who more than likely should be at a similar level to what the Saiyans are at. This foe could even be the true universe 6 version of Frieza and I'm not talking about Frost but possibly another new character such as the brother of Frost, Bleed, as seen in the Dragon Ball Super EX manga, or just any new kind of tyrant who has wishes to take over the Saiyan planet and enslave them, just as the original Saiyans of Universe 7 used to be. With the newly achieved Super Saiyan 2 form of the King, Vegeta can stand and watch with a smile and possible tear in his eyes as he watches an entirely different version of events play out where the king was actually able to show his true Saiyan pride and destroy anyone who belittled the power of the Saiyans. Thus counteracting the trauma Vegeta suffered as a child 
witnessing his own father do the complete opposite to Frieza. But yeah guys, that was it for this arc exploration of a possible Vegeta saga in Dragon Ball Super 2019. I tried to put myself in the shoes of Toriyama and look at exactly what would make a good new series and saga for Dragon Ball Super when it returns next year and I'm happy with the result. Just please do make sure to leave your own thoughts on this down below and also ideas for possible future arcs as I read and reply to almost all of them as you know and if they are great you'll more than likely see them come to life on your screen here. But until next video guys, cheers.